Welcome to ZanCon Live, where everything is discussed and nothing is censored. Today we have with us an Islamic scholar, a leader in Islamic eschatology, an author of many books, and he's given multiple lectures on the subject of Islamic eschatology. We will be discussing with him the topic of the Dajjal and the end times. We have none other than Sheikh Imran Hussain. Welcome to our show, Sheikh Imran Hussain. It's a pleasure having you, sir. Thank you for your kind invitation. Uh, since today's topic is on the Dajjal and you, your work on Islamic eschatology, we are all aware of. I want to ask you the first question. Uh, Sheikh, how will the world be before the Dajjal arrives as a person? Bismillah rahman rahim Before Dajjal arrives in person, our Prophet Allah's blessings be upon him has given us a timeline. The one that with which I am most comfortable is a hadith uh, of the Prophet والسلام, in which he was speaking to his companion Muaz ibn Jabal anhu, and the hadith is located in the Sunan of Abi Dawood. And he said that uh, at that time when Jerusalem is center stage in the world and uh, Medina is uh, in forlorn desolation then the next event would be the great war, the Malhamah and then would come the conquest of Constantinople and we know why a Muslim army will conquer Constantinople, we know why and then after that comes the Khuruj of Dajjal, meaning that Dajjal will now appear in human form. Sir, there is a difference of opinion regarding Dajjal. Some scholars are of the opinion that the Dajjal will be a system and then a person. Uh, what is your opinion? I'd like you to clarify. Those who wish to follow uh, that opinion the Dajjal is a system, are free to go their way and leave me alone. Our Prophet والسلام, the first thing he said about Dajjal is that he referred to him as al Masih Dajjal, implying, and this is elementary, that here, here is someone who wants to impersonate the Messiah and that is why he is called al Masih dajjal The Messiah was a human being and therefore someone who wants to, him, to impersonate the Messiah can't be a mountain, can he? He has to be a human being. We read in the hadith that the Dajjal will have some sort of a control. So, you know, I ask the same question again. Will he be like a president? Will he be a king, a dictator, a warrior? Will he have some sort of a system before he arrives? Yes. In order for him <laughs> to fulfill his mission of impersonating the true Messiah, we must first of all recognize that the Messiah is someone described by Prophet Muhammad والسلام, as al hakimul adil someone who would rule, not rule downtown Chicago, rule the world, and rule the world with justice. Ruling the world with justice requires power. It requires political power, it requires economic power, it requires military power in order to rule the world. And so someone who wants to impersonate the Messiah must therefore also seek to rule the world. And in order for him to rule the world, he has to come with a political system that will allow him to rule the world. And so he has created the political system today. 
He has created the United Nations organization and he has embraced all of us like sheep and cattle and goats and camels who have lost the capacity to think. All of us are in the United Nations and he has created the International Monetary Fund in order to embrace all of us and entrap us and rule of us and all of us like sheep and cattle and goats and camels have all become members of the International Monetary Fund. This is Dajjal. He has to come with many different systems in order to be able to establish his rule over mankind. Uh, sir, you've named a few events that will happen before uh, Dajjal arrives uh, as a person. Um, can you elaborate more? What is Constantinople? What are the other events? The Great War is the next event and uh, it is called the Malhama Armageddon in, uh, in, in the Bible and uh, in, the, in the Torah and the Gospel they know of it as, as Armageddon uh, but um, we are not the only ones <laughs> who are expecting the Great War most of mankind now are convinced that there is nuclear war coming and it is because that nuclear war will be in one in which NATO would seek to wage war on Russia and China because while others have no problem in bending down and kneeling on their knees for everything that comes from Washington and London and the World Health Organization, Russia and China refuse to bend their knees in submission to the West. And because of this, they need to wage war. They need to wage war because their monetary system is now threatened by China and Russia. The monetary system in which the US dollar is the international currency. And so there are lots of people who agree with us that yes, NATO is lusting for war with Russia. And Russia has said, we're ready for you anytime you want to come. We're ready for you. And when Russia took Crimea and we celebrated, we who still have the capacity to think, we celebrated when Russia took Crimea. Russia took control of the Black Sea. And this is in preparation for the Great War because Russia will survive the Great War and China will survive the Great War. But modern Western civilization will suffer such an enormous defeat. The Quran speaks about that defeat when Allah says in Surah Al Rahman, but nobody studies the Quran tomorrow at this time. Pakistanis have more important things to do than to study the Quran. And I'm here in Pakistan as a forlorn Islamic scholar. I'm here to try to teach the Quran as it ought to be taught. Allah says in Surah Al Rahman, بَعَدَوْزَ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ سَنَفْرُغُ لَكُمْ أَيُّهَا الثَّقَلَانِ I'm going to deal with you, he talking about the Great War. So Russia and China, of course, they will be badly, badly affected by the war, but they will survive. And that prepares the way, because you know, Russia now controls Crimea. That prepares the way for a Muslim army to conquer Constantinople. And when the Muslim army conquers Constantinople, as prophesied by Nabi Muhammad and I don't have time for the sheep and cattle and goats and camels who argue that the conquest of Constantinople by the Ottoman Empire in 1453 fulfilled the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad Tell these people, go your way and leave me alone. When the conquest of Constantinople takes place after the Great War, the first thing that we would do is to return Hagia Sophia 
to those to whom it rightfully belongs. And I am tremendously happy to find that in the more than four months that I've been in Pakistan, and I've been traveling in many parts of Pakistan, not one person has dared to come before me to argue the case with me. Not one. Not one. I don't know where they're hiding. What's the reason? They were trumping and beating and dancing that, uh, no, 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 where Hagia Sophia now is a masjid and it's time for us to celebrate. I don't know where they're hiding, in which hole they're hiding. They're scared to come before me. Not one Pakistani has ever deferred to me. That we will return Hagia Sophia to those to whom it rightfully belongs. And when we do that, the church bells of Greece will ring more lustily than any other Orthodox Christian people. That's why I'm waiting for the day when I can visit Greece, inshallah. And uh, when we return Hagia Sophia to that Orthodox Christian world, then the prophecy in the Quran will be fulfilled in which Allah has promised, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prophesied that a Christian people will become closest in love and affection to us Muslims. Where is Islamic scholarship today? To be able to at least understand the Quran before you explain it in contemporary language. This is what's going to happen. And then when we conquer Constantinople, the Bosphorus will now be free. And the Russian Navy will be able to, to go to the unmolested into the Mediterranean. And that's bad news for Israel. Uh, Sheikh, when the Jal arrives, what sort of a narrative according to the Quran, Sayyidi, the Bible, what narrative will he use to convince the people that he's the Messiah? He has to first of all prepare the way for his target audience who are the Jews to be convinced that he is indeed the Messiah. That there is one part of the Christian world which has joined in alliance with the Jews and in the Quran, we, have, we are prohibited from maintaining friendly ties with them. But the president of Turkey has less than a passing acquaintance with the Quran. So he doesn't know that. So Turkey is a member of NATO, not only a member of NATO, comfortably a member of NATO in conflict, manifest conflict with Allah's command in the Quran. Don't take those people as your friends and allies. And that's what Erdogan has done. But there is another part of the Christian world which is not going to be in alliance with the Jews. This part of the Christian world would recognize that this man is not the Messiah. And the Muslim world, of course, has those who just eat their biryani and go home and sleep. So they will dance to any tune that Dajjal plays. But there are other Muslims who have the capacity to think. And when they see him standing in Jerusalem declaring, I am the Messiah, they will say, no, this is Dajjal, the false Messiah. So he has to do all the work that he has to do to convince his target audience that he is the Messiah. And the most important thing of all, is to be established, to be able to establish Pax Judaica in succession to Pax Americana. Sheikh, I'm a journalist and I read mainstream media and also alternative media. And you've just mentioned that the Jal will rule the world. Now, if we read alternative media uh, terminology, they call this the one world government that's going to come. Prime Minister Imran Khan's latest interview with HBO, he, he used the term uh, cultural impi imperialism. So I'm trying to ask this question, one world government, and they're also going to try to have a one world uh, a culture? You notice that my name 
never appears in newspapers in Pakistan. I'm not in a radio. You don't see me on television. It's because I recognize that what you refer to as the mainstream media, I recognize it as Dajjal's mouthpiece. It's the bogus media. But the sheep and cattle and goats and camels, they love it, fine, let them stay with it and let them eat that and go home and sleep. So I look for news elsewhere, not in what they call the mainstream media. And I don't sing for my supper to offer opinions that will be pleasing to the market out there in Washington that will pay me my monthly salary. <laughs> the, the narrative that is coming uh, from uh, people like the government of Pakistan and others is that there is indeed a one world order emerging and it is coming clearly from modern western civilization and it is a civilization which was created by the Dajjal but they don't know it they are Maulanas and Muftis and Shuyukh and all of these things and they have control of the Tarul looms and they prof pro offer themselves as scholars of Islam and they are blissfully ignorant that from the Quran itself you get the evidence that modern Western civilization was created by Dajjal and it is this modern Western civilization which is spreading its tentacles even after decolonization and even after the freedom, the national freedom movements have brought into being states like the Republic of Pakistan and the Republic of India and so on. They are still pursuing the, or the effort to bring all of mankind into one global order. Uh, Sheikh, uh, when I talk to Islamic scholars living in the West, um, they tell me secretly that they have so much pressure on them that if they say that homosexuality is haram in Islam, they will get banned and they might even get jailed. So when I was talking about cultural imperialism, what I'm trying to say is that is, are there powers in the world trying to inculcate one culture? And if we don't agree with their culture, LGBT e and... Even you know, schoolboy knows it, that they are pursuing relentlessly so an effort to transform all of mankind into carbon copies of themselves. Even a schoolboy knows it. So why would you continue to live there and be censored and you could only preach and deliver that version of Islam that they approve of? Who will have any confidence in you as an Islamic scholar? And you also become an advisor to the U.S. government. And you expect us to respect you. Why don't you leave the United States and Britain and act with five rupees worth of integrity and come to places like Pakistan where you have, I am here with freedom. The government of Pakistan has never made any effort to censor me. I speak with freedom. And if you have some integrity, I can speak like this at the age of 80. Why don't you leave the United States? Is it because it's too comfortable there for you? No, you come to Pakistan and you will have the freedom to talk. And you could also eat the best mangoes in the world. Uh, Sheikh, uh, a hadith says that women will be, one of the, will be in majority in following the Dajjal. Why is that so? The Dajjal, uh, our Prophet Islam said that the last people to follow the Dajjal will be women. And the brainwashing of women will be so 
total and complete that you cannot talk to them no he says a man would have to return to his home and coercively restrain coercively restrain coercively restrain mean tying his wife and sister and daughter to protect them from being seduced by Dajjal it is the modern feminist revolution which is not only taking the world by storm but has taken good roots here in Pakistan as well you have women who are faithful to the truth you have women in Pakistan who are faithful to the truth faithful to the Quran faithful to Nabi Muhammad and the Quran has described these women as righteous women but you have another breed of women who are now captivated by the 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 feminist revolution that is coming from the jazz modern western civilization and you can see the effect on these women brainwashed women that they do not wish to live lives of righteousness they do not wish to live lives in which they perform the function that Allah has given to them the, ma the male and the female have been created and the Quran tells us functionally different the man has a function a duty to maintain women and to guard and to protect them but they say no we don't need men to guard and protect us and to maintain us so we say to such women would you kindly leave us and go your way you are the equivalent of rubbish in our man and we'd rather not have to deal with rubbish my language is harsh because you can't talk to them and Allah has given to women functional roles it's like the night and the day the day has a functional role to perform and the night has a functional role to perform and Allah says that when the two come together fulfilling their function then you have a harmonious system but no 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 she says anything a man does I have to have the freedom to do so I say go your way and f find a place where you can live with your kind of people and the your kind of people are those who eventually declare that a man should have the freedom to marry another man and a woman should have the freedom to marry another woman and it's a woman's body she has freedom in her body to rule over her body she wants to put on clothes that's her business she wants to take off clothes that's her business we say go find your place to live and leave us alone we don't want to see you you are contaminating our society go your way we don't even have to argue with you uh, you just mentioned that the jaw, the jaw created the Western civilization. Now, when you uh, say this, are you trying to say the person, the jaw, or the dark energy of the jaw? How did he create the Western civilization? Is he here? We we settled this issue at the beginning of the interview that there is a creation, a being, who is known as Al Masihud Dajjal but he has with him those who support him and who assist him our prophet Islam, spoke about the jinn for example supporting the jal and it is also there in the quran the jinn supporting the jal and so blockchain technology didn't come falling from the sky <laughs> yes and the cryptocurrencies and the you one universal currency that is just around the corner all of these are part and parcel of a civilization which was created by the jar and which has support from the shayateen and the quran but who studies the quran today the quran confirms it yes the jar has support 
from shayatin of the jinn and of the men. There are lots of them in Washington supporting the child, yes. Um, now let's not overlap the timelines. I want to know that the Dajjal has appeared. How long will it take for Imam Mahdi to appear and confront him? The Dajjal uh, will appear and proclaim himself to be the Messiah in Washington. Sorry, not Washington. In, in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And then he can say, uh, he can now claim, I have completed my mission. Unless the Dajjal has completed his mission of declaring himself to be the Messiah in a Jerusalem which is Pax Judaica, the Imam al-Mahdi cannot be sent. So the Imam al-Mahdi, the advent of Imam al-Mahdi will commence only after the Dajjal has completed his mission. And so we still have some time left for that. As soon as the Imam al-Mahdi emerges and uh, the, the, all of these Republican states and monarchies and so on which clutter the world of Islam today have disappeared. And uh, the Muslim, the Ummah of Muhammad Islam is restored. Its political integrity is restored. But conventional wisdom, conventional political wisdom in Islamabad can't even understand this subject. <laughs> the political integrity of the Ummah is restored with the Khilafah state. And if you ask them what's a Khilafah state, they don't even know what's a Khilafah state. They don't study the Quran. I don't know what to do with them. I am here in Pakistan to teach the young ones in the universities, 18, 19, 20, 21 of you. Teach them the Quran so that a new generation of scholars of Islam will emerge tomorrow, which will command respect. You can't get that from the Darul Um. And so, when the, the Imam has established the Khilafah state, Dajjal perceives this to be his greatest threat. So a, a, an Israeli army, massive Islam, Israeli army, now invades Syria in pursuit of the Imam to corner him and to kill him. So that the, the Khilafah state established in Mecca would collapse. It is when the Israeli army has surrounded the Imam at a masjid in Damascus. The Imam is surrounded. The Muslim forces are be beleaguered. It is at that moment that Allah will send back the Messiah, the true Messiah, Nabi Isa Um Hadith have said, and you can correct me, that uh, Imam Mahdi will be helped by armies from the Khurasan. Where is Khurasan right now? Our uh, distinguished uh, late scholar Dr. Israr Ahmad Rahimahullah, he did the homework and he described a Khurasan of that time to be the north western part of Pakistan that now is described as KPK, KPK and uh, the whole of Afghanistan and the east of Iran and the north of, uh, Af of Afghanistan all of this is ancient Khorasan and my forefathers came from that part of the world maybe <laughs> I got a little bit of backbone from my ancestors yeah. and uh, it is not part of the world which has resisted, consistently resisted Western oppression. Uh, Iran has set a magnificent example to this day in resisting American imperialism. They want to bring regime change to Venezuela after 200 years of gunboat diplomacy, toppling governments, 
Here and they held a skelter all over Latin America. Now they reach checkmate. United States cannot change the Venezuelan government. They have imposed horrible sanctions. Venezuela is suffering. I am just next door to Venezuela in Trinidad. We are inundated with refugees, Venezuelan refugees in Trinidad. And uh, Venezuela didn't have oil because the refineries can't work. Iran sent five tankers filled with oil. The U.S. warships were right there in the Caribbean Sea. And the U.S. warships could not stop them. That is courage. And the five tankers reached uh, Caracas and they unloaded the oil. Iran has backbone. Afghanistan fought the United States for 20 years. And the United States is now with its tail between its legs. Like a puppy dog withdrawing from Afghanistan. But your scholars and your writers here in Pakistan who sing for their supper and have to write in a manner pleasing to Washington. They won't use this kind of language. Afghanistan has succeeded in resisting American oppression. And KPK is just like that. And thank Allah that you now have a prime minister who, who has confessed what was happening in KPK. He says, we're not going to fight America's war for America anymore. So Khorasan is a part of the world which has consistently shown backbone, opposing British oppression, Soviet oppression, and American oppression. It is from here, from the time Israel wants to attack Lehman, that army will begin its march from Khorasan. And our prophet prophesied, he said, no one will be able to stop that army until it reaches Jerusalem. Sheikh, when we talk about the Dajjal, we read in different books that he will have powers. Uh, I've read in the Bible and also the Say Hadith, and what the impression I get is that he will have extreme levels of control on the economy. In the book of Re Revelations in the Bible, uh, it's written that the anti nobody will be able to buy or sell unless the person has mark of the beast. And if we read the Hadith, it says that the Jal will destroy the crops and he will give people um, crops, the people who follow him. So what the impression I get is that he will have enormous amounts of power on the economy and also politically. My question to you is, is that please correct me if my analogy is right or wrong. And secondly, the Jal will have black magical powers or scientific powers, or both? You have asked three or four questions in one, and you put me in the uncomfortable position <laughs> of having to deliver a lecture two or three, four hours long to answer you. Let's take the first, the first question and disregard the other question. The mark of the beast in buying and selling. This is a very clear indication that Dajjal, through his civilization, modern Western civilization, that the Darulum does know about because they eat their biryani and go home and sleep. That's all they do. They stop thinking. Dr. Iqbal said they stopped thinking 300 years ago. And when I go try to teach them, they shut the doors of the masjid on me. They did that all over Britain. <laughs> all over Britain. Pakistani Maulanas and Muftis established their credentials. Shut the doors on Imran who said, fine, I'm here in Pakistan now. Why are you so silent? Why don't you stand up to, to come and confront me? They don't do that. They're scared in Pakistan to come up and stand, confront me. But I'm not in the media. So you can't wage a war in the media against me, no. Dajjal uses modern Western civilization to take control of money. And if you had done your homework, you would have known that the Quran has given a definition of money 
supported by the Sunnah of the Prophet Gold currency. That money in Islam as money for this Ummah as for previous Ummahs is always money with intrinsic value. Did you ever teach this subject in the Darulum? Does the State Bank of Pakistan know what the Quran says about money? It is such a frustrating experience that we have to try to build a new generation of scholars of Islam to replace this. Money in Islam is always money with intrinsic value. And the Quran speaks of dinar and the Quran speaks of dirham. Who cares about the Quran today? But they have their PhD from MIT. So who cares about the Quran? I speak like this because of frustration. I'm 80 years of age and I've been teaching the subject of Islam and the international monetary system for 25 years. But they're deaf, they can't hear. They're dumb, they can't talk. So that's why I speak like this with frustration. The modern West came and replaced money with intrinsic value. Halal money. And replaced it with bogus, fraudulent, and utterly haram money with no intrinsic value. The money which they now use has a fictitious value, but Mufti doesn't know that. Mufti can only eat his biryani and go home and sleep from top to the bottom. That's what Mufti does. So that means your view on cryptocurrency is also negative. All money with no intrinsic value has come from the jar and they're comfortable with it. The International Monetary Fund, thank Allah, that I studied international relations in two universities after graduating from an institute of Islamic studies. Thank Allah for Molana, Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman and Sari, that I can sit comfortably in the presence of your governor of your, your state bank because I know my subject of monetary economics, international monetary economics. I know my subject and I know what the Quran says. So I, I'm not scared of sitting with the scholars. I'm not scared at all. Hmm? The Quran declares that this is halal money. Dinar and dirham. The articles of agreement of the International Monetary Fund declare this is haram. You are prohibited from using gold as money. A schoolboy knows that if you make haram what Allah made haral, halal, if you make haram what Allah made halal, a schoolboy knows that that is shirk. But the governor doesn't know it. And the ministers doesn't know it. The prime minister doesn't know it. What can you do with them? This is shirk, according to the Quran. Okay? So what do you do? Ahmad Sokarno, who is recognized by the sheep and the cattle and the goats and the camels as a fool. But I recognize him as a hero. He took Indonesia out of the IMF. And I honor him for that. But tomorrow, and the tomorrow is not fine coming, all of them, every single one of them, will have to say goodbye to the IMF, whether they like it or they don't, because integrity will return to the world of Islam. And this bogus system will go into the garbage bin from where it emerged in the first place. When integrity returns to this Ummah, we will once more use gold and silver as money. And then you will not have this shameful, shameful, shameful economy in which he is earning 300,000 rupees a month and his servant is paid 
15,000 rupees a month. That's drinking the blood of the working man. That is living off his sweat because the market wage is the jazz wage. If this country is to return to integrity, you should pay that man a percentage of your income rather than the market wage so that he will share with you the wealth that you have and he can live comfortably. If he goes to the village, he will be earning about 12,000 rupees a month. So he comes to Islamabad so he can get 15 or 18,000 and you're getting 300,000 a month and that's the wage you pay. Don't you have any shame? Don't you have any shame? You're living off his sweat. You're drinking his blood. That's the economy today. Thanks to this monetary system. But tomorrow is gone. There's a new generation of scholars coming to replace your muftis. Okay, I'm giving you a warning. There's a new generation of scholars coming the last shower of rain. And they will replace these muftis and they'll be able to speak authentically and declare of this monetary system that's bogus, it's fraudulent, it's haram. Sheikh, I want to ask the question, what sort of a deception will Dajjal have? Because according to Islamic eschatology, many people won't even recognize him. So what, is, what are going to be the main deceptions of Dajjal? The Quran has answered your question in Surah al kaf of the Quran. The encounter of Musa alayhi salam with Khidr alayhi salam. Khidr is not his name. Khidr is a, a title. Uh, it means green. And he got this title green because the knowledge that he has, that knowledge when he reaches that knowledge out, it's like raindrops. It's like rain falling. And the rain brings the dead earth back to life and everything becomes green. This is not mechanical knowledge that is put in a package and taught by the Darulum, transferred from generation to generation, where you don't have to think. This is a different kind of knowledge that comes from Khidr alayhi salam. And uh, the Quran uses the encounter of Musa Islam and Khidr Islam to teach the lesson that in the age of Dajjal, appearance and reality are different from each other. Things are not what they appear to be. The Prophet said to Islam that he, Dajjal will bring two things with him, a river and a fire. But whoever but his river is a fire and his fire is the cool waters of a river. In other words, Dajjal takes the road to heaven and makes it look <laughs> like the road to hell. Who wants to live? Who wants to leave Los Angeles and Miami and New York to come and live in Topi and Chicago? Hmm? Who wants to do that? Huh? That's heaven. This is hell. So he takes the road to heaven and makes it look like the road to hell. But what Dajjal has done is that he took the road to hell and made it look like the road to heaven. And so they are now trapped in the United States. I hope they listen to this video. They are trapped in the United States. Their children and their grandchildren will be taught that a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. That's, that's the bitter fruit you'll have to eat. And their grandchildren will be eating bacon and eggs for breakfast and drinking wine for lunch. Hmm? That's, you, want, you went to the United States for the good life now live with a good life. So you have to be able in the age of Dajjal to have the capacity to see and recognize things as they are and not as they appear to be. 
There are two du'as that can be recited. Allahumma arini ala shia'a kamahi. O oh Allah, kindly show me things as they are. So I am not deceived by what they appear to be. And then there is the du'a of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahumma arini al-haqqa haqqa warzukni tibah. Wa arini al-batila batila warzukni tinaba. O Allah, kindly show me things. Show me truth as truth. And grant that I might recognize it as truth and follow it. And show me falsehood as falsehood. And grant that I might recognize it as falsehood and reject it. And so you have to have in the age of Dajjal a capacity to see and to penetrate things beyond the normal. And that capacity comes only when you have noor in your heart. And you will never have noor light in your heart if you're committing zina. She invites you to have sexual relations with her, or you invite her to have sexual relations with you, and it's haram. And you enjoy the moment, fine. <laughs> and guess what's the price you pay? The price that you pay for that zina is that all the noor that you ever had is gone. And all that you now have inside of you is darkness. The other way in which you can lose your noor is of course with riba. Riba. And there are many different forms of riba. We don't have the time to take that. So you need to have noor in your heart. Your heart has to be clean and pure. And if the heart is kept clean and pure, faithful to Allah, then noor can enter into that heart. This is epistemology. And it's not taught to our people. When you have noor in your heart, you'll now be able to see what otherwise cannot be, cannot be seen. And our Prophet warned, he says, اِتَّقُوا فِرَاسَةَ الْمُؤْمِنِ فَإِنَّهُ يَنْزُرُ بِنُورِ اللَّهِ Fear, fear, fear! The penetrating insight and wisdom of the mu'min. Because when he sees, he sees with the nur of Allah. Sheikh Dajjal has arrived now, can you please explain to us how will he die, according to Islamic eschatology? When the, the, the Messiah comes down, because the masjid is surrounded by the Israeli army, and Dajjal is outside leading them, he's their Messiah. The Imam is in the masjid, and when he comes down, the Imam will recognize him, this is the son of Mary. And then there's a salat, we don't have time to deal with that subject. And then he, the Messiah will say, open the gates, the masjid is barricaded. Because this is war. And he comes out one, one, only one solitary person comes out of the masjid. And Dajjal sees him and Dajjal recognizes him as the true Messiah. And Dajjal is then filled with such terror that the Prophet said he will melt like salt melts in water. And he pulls off, running for their life. The Israeli army recognizes this man as the Messiah. So they are astonished, they are bewildered, and eventually demoralized, seeing their Messiah running for their life. Because one solitary individual comes out of the masjid and the army has surrounded the masjid. Eventually they realize we've been taken for a ride. This is not the true messiah. This is the false messiah. That man who came out of the masjid, that's the true messiah. That Nabi Isa uh, We don't have the time to expand on this subject. So the true messiah pursues the false messiah and eventually kills him. When he kills him, he passes into non-existence. No human being passes into non-existence. A human being would be raised to life again on Judgment Day. 
And a human being will stand before Allah for judgment. But Dajjal will pass into non-existence because he's not a human being. He appears as a human being. But the Quran has described him as a jasad. I've written a book on that. The Quran, Dajjal and the Jasad. I advise you to read that book. Thank you so much, Sheikh Imran Hussain, for being on Zan Khan Live. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you for taking out the time. You're welcome. Okay. This is Sheikh Imran Hussain, one of the leading scholars in the Muslim world regarding Islamic eschatology. We were discussing the subject on the Jal and the end times. Until the next episode of Zan Khan Live, keep on watching Zan Khan Live, where everything is discussed and nothing is censored. Assalamu alaikum, take care, goodbye.